What's going on everybody and welcome on into the video. We're talking short squeezes today and how we can build out our own customized short squeeze scanner on finviz.com. Now, the short squeeze, I guess, whole craziness, all that went on really 2020, 2021, that has definitely subsided. But the purpose of this scanner is not gonna be to find the next, you know, GameStop, to find the next AMC and to kind of get all caught up in the hype. We're not trying to do that. We're actually trying to identify short squeezes on shorter time frames for a lot of other stocks. And we can get a lot of that. And sometimes with small caps, even penny stocks, you can see some really big short squeezes. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 plus percent, sometimes even 100 plus percent after some decent moves. So what I want to do is I want to make sure we can do that ourselves and build out a pretty quick scanner that could be easy to use, easy to customize on Finviz. So there'll be a link down below for Finviz uh, if you want to use that link or just type in finviz.com into your browser and you're going to get to a site like this. You may see a ton of ads. That's the free version. Get an ad blocker if you want to. Um, but that said, let's go to the screener tab right here and we can start building out our customized screener right here for a short squeeze, right? So in this situation, there's a lot to choose from. There's a lot to kind of go off of. So we have a lot of options. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of cover the most important things that you absolutely need. And then after that, we'll talk about some other things that you want to look for. Okay. Because a lot of people kind of jump in and they're like, oh, short squeeze this, short squeeze that. And I need this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and all these different things. And next thing you know, you have no stocks on your scanner because nothing fits the criteria. You don't want that. You want to have a lot of stocks or at least a decent amount to look through. I would say at least you want, you know, 10 plus stocks on this list, depending upon how, you know, I guess narrow or how selective you are in your, your, at least your filters. Okay. So first things first, I'm going to go over here on the descriptive tab. And what I need to do is I need to go over here and I need to make sure that my stock is shortable. So in this case, I'm going to make sure we have shortable selected right there. Then we kind of work our way back to the left of right here. And what I'm going to look for is I'm going to go to float short. Okay. So what this is telling me is there's a lot of people who are actively shorting this stock right now uh, out of the float, out of the amount of shares available to the public to trade. Okay. So I'm going to go to a high short float over 20%. You could go with something like over 10, over 15. Um, I'm going to go with over 20 because this is going to kind of narrow us down a little bit better, at least in my opinion. So now you can see that right here, we have a list of five pages and on each page, we have about 20 stocks. So they're giving us roughly 85 stocks actually, because the last page would be a few stocks. So they're giving us 85 stocks here uh, that we can now sort through. Now that's a lot, right? So that's just like, it, it's not really, that's, that's not the point of the scanner. You want to have a little more kind of narrowed an approach here. Okay. Let's dive a little bit deeper. Next thing I'm going to look for is the market cap. Now, why would you look at this? Well, because we don't want to look at like Facebook or Apple or like, can, are we really going to short? Are you going to get a short squeeze on Apple on Amazon, Google? No, you're not. So let's bring this in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to minus large, which means under a $200 billion market cap. Even that could be high. You can even go to mid and go to an under $10 billion market cap. These are generally going to be stocks that could move a lot faster. They're going to be mid to small caps. And these could be stocks that, you know, we, we could really see some big effects of a short squeeze. So I can go to minus large or minus mid, depending upon your preference. I'm going to go to minus mid here. We'll solidify or narrow our list down a little bit more. So if I click on minus mid, now we got 78 stocks on our list. Okay. We can still do some more. Okay. So Right here, you can start kind of scrolling through some charts if you want to, but I'm going to solidify this or narrow this down a little bit more. I'm not sure why I keep saying solidify, but I'm going to narrow it down a little bit more. So you can go to something like float. So if you want to look for like small caps, like true penny stocks, low float stocks, I can go to like an under 50 million or under a hundred million float. That's how many shares are available to trade. So if I was to go to like under 50 million shares, now I only have 46 stocks on this list and we're really kind of narrowing this down. There's some more things we can do. So let's say I want to go under 50 million. Now, really at the end of the day here, guys, we have kind of gone over the most important parts of the scanner. Now we can talk about preference and talk about some other aspects that we might want to look into. And that might make some sense. So I want to go for some lower float stocks. That means that, Hey, on some pretty big buying volume and some buying pressure, these things can make some big moves and we can see some, some nice short squeezes. Okay. So I'm going to go to under 50 million float there. Again, that depends upon exactly what you want. And then from here, I'm going to go to relative volume. Now relative volume, I want to see over one. Now what is it? it doesn't really make a big deal. You can go to over 1.5, over two, over five. That's going to show you a lot more volume, but relatively speaking, I want to see stocks that are trading more volume than usual. 
just that's all I really care. I don't really care if it's like a ton more or a little bit more. I just want to see a little bit of action there. Just give us some volume and that's all. Now, this brings us down to 10 stocks on the list. All right, so now we got 10 stocks on our list. And what I want to actually now talk about is I want to talk a little bit more about what to look for for a short squeeze. Now, obviously, we made people want to look at stocks that are, you know, bottomed out that are low. So let's look at some of these charts. We look at ARCH. That's a stock that's actually uptrending the past two months. BOWL is a stock that's actually downtrending and it's kind of bottom, almost oh, in a sense, it's, it's at the lows, right? So it's, you know, providing potentially some good risk reward right there. Uh, we have Dutch Bros right here, BROS, that's actually popped off the bottom, uh, made about a $15 move. That one's really interesting. I'll talk about why. We'll go to that chart in a second. So I can start scrolling through and, and look for stocks. Now, what I meant by liking the Dutch Bros chart, Bros, right here, is this is an interesting stock because it's made a nice move. It's pulled back a little bit from its highs, but it's starting to hold up. Now, when we're looking for a short squeeze, I'll talk about what I like to look for. It doesn't mean that's what you want to look for. But at the end of the day, we don't necessarily always like a stock to just be at the lows and have a high short float because there's no kind of catalyst. There's nothing to ignite us yet. Now, you could sit there and wait for a catalyst or wait for something to ignite the fire, some news, whether you have looked into the company, there's this coming up, there's this, there's that. And that could be really valid. But what we want to look for is stocks that have actually made a little bounce. And what that tells us and what that means, if you look at Dutch Bros right here, if you look at the past couple of weeks, this volume is a little elevated. It's showing we have some movement there. There's something going on. Doesn't mean that this stock is going to go higher and squeeze up, but we start looking at some of the data, some of the numbers, we see a 25.37% short float. We see that the stock only has a shares float of 27 million. So there's not that many shares available to the public to trade and a lot of those shares are being shorted right now. So you start to do the math and you start backing your way into this and like, wait a second, this could be setting up because now it's got a bounce. It's allowed more shorts to file in. And the problem with stocks that are just kind of fading off and going lower and lower with very little volume is that there's no additional time for shorts to kind of add in heavier. Now, when you get a pop like this, you have an opportunity for shorts to add into that pop and try to short this thing down and get it to go down even more. That only fuels that short interest that can potentially fuel a short squeeze if the stock is holding up. So now this stock is on my radar. This stock, as long as it holds up on the highs back in December of 2021, this stock roughly like 54 bucks or so, if it holds up here in the mid to low 50s, this could be setting up for the next squeeze out and that actual short squeeze to really take off. And now, again, depending upon the stock, the price, all of this stuff, you have to take this all into account for the potential range. Do we think that Dutch Bros is going to go on a 100% short squeeze in two days? Probably not, guys. This stock went from 41 up to about 80 bucks, so it has a history of a 100% move, but that was in the course of about a one-month span or a three-week span. So you have to kind of take the timing of the chart, look at the big picture, look at how much it's moved over the past couple of weeks, past couple of months, to back your way into the potential that this could see. This could potentially pop back up towards the 70s, 80s if we see further momentum, if we get that short squeeze, and that would be a nice little run from where we're at right now. So again, on options or shares, whatever you want to do, however you want to play it, that's what we're looking for. And again, back to our scanner right here, what I'm going to do is there's a lot more I can look at. I can add fundamental features. I can add technical features. For example, I want to look at stocks that are above their 50-day moving average. So the 50-day simple moving average right here, I go to price above the SMA 50, and now I can see stocks and Dutch Bros fits that bill, and I can see stocks that have positive momentum as of late. That's another feature you could use. The last thing to do here is going to be save this, okay? So you may think yourself, okay, what am I doing? How do I save this? I'm going to go over here to presets and I'm going to click on save screen, type in the name for the screener and then click on save changes. And then I will now have this saved into the top left of my Finviz account. And I can jump around through here and I'm able to pretty much go back and forth between any of my saved presets or my saved screens. That's how you create your short squeeze scanner on Finviz. Again, take it how you see fit. You don't have to use my style, my approach. You can add a lot more where that came from. But the more you add, the more filters you add, the less stocks you're going to see. So make sure that they're useful. And sometimes it's easy. To, it's better to start off with a broader kind of net. And then if you need to narrow things in, then you can narrow things in. But start broad and then go from there. Links will be down below to Finviz to get some free stocks with Weeble if you guys want to use the platform that we use here all the time on the channel. Tons more videos here on the channel when it comes to tutorials, when it comes to Weeble, when it comes to Finviz. Feel free to check out the channel playlist. Make sure you guys are subscribed here. Hit the thumbs up button if you get something out of the videos. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.